The good news is that 3D printing is not only available for, for in the space for, for food. Now, Fondini is the first commercially available 3D printer for printing, 3D printing savory foods. Imagine how easy it can be to 3D print your homemade ravioli. I mean, it's something that can revolutionize the food industry, or at least win a MasterChef TV competition. Fondini, lean at Cooks, Cooksama. So I have a slightly different presentation on 3D printed food. My name is Lynette Kuzma. I'm a, from a company called Natch Machines. I'm one of the co-founders. And we've been invited here to share with you our vision of 3D food printing. So this is our 3D food printer. We call it Foodini. It was supposed to be here with me on stage today to do a demo, but we had an issue with an airline. It was denied boarding, first time that's ever happened. So sorry, it's not here with us today. So our vision is that we believe that 3D food printing can help us eat healthier. Here's one reason why. Empty food capsules. You're not forced to buy pre-filled food capsules to use our printer. With empty food capsules, you can print using real, fresh, wholesome, nutritious, healthy foods. You have an unlimited amount of ingredients you can play with, and you can customize food to your taste. You can also print a very wide range of foods, savory foods, sweet foods, meals, and snacks. So the question always becomes, well, why should anybody 3D print food? It's a good question. It's not a novelty. Here's our proposition to consumers. We become over-reliant on processed, pre-made, packaged food. We're a time press society. We don't have time to make all these foods fresh in our kitchens but it's come at a price to have somebody else do it for us. Look at the prepackaged foods and the pre-made foods you ate. A lot of them have a lot of preservatives and additives to make these foods last for months or years. That's not natural. That's not eating healthy. Look at the ingredient list. You'll find chemical-sounding names of ingredients. We don't know what we're eating. And when we do know what we're eating, what we don't know is exactly how much of those ingredients we're eating. So when we're eating processed foods, we're eating way too much salt, oil, and sugar than we would if we were making these foods at home. So our proposition is to get people back in the kitchens and to make these types of foods we become accustomed to using fresh, real ingredients, and to use a 3D food printer to do that. It can make it faster than you can by hand, and you can use all fresh, natural ingredients. So it's not for every food. That's not our proposition. We're not saying you should eat everything 3D printed. It's not for things like a stew. You don't need a 3D printer for that. But think about your favorite packaged foods that require assembly or food shaping, from a simple cracker that's a square to another shape. That's where 3D food printers shine. You also have no food waste. Print what you want to eat. Don't be forced to buy that serving size of five servings when you only really need four and you're going to throw away the rest. So how does it work? We're at Maker Faire. We like to know how things work. This is our 3D food printer next to some common kitchen things, so you can see the size of it. It's about the size of a microwave. On the top, there's room to drop into up to five food capsules. The machine will automatically exchange the ingredients as it needs it. You also have the option to individually heat those food capsules. This comes in handy for things like printing chocolate to keep chocolate at a good melting point, or to print heated mashed potatoes. Food goes in the top, comes out on the bottom. In the center there, you see a touchscreen tablet. That's how you operate the machine. It also means it's a connected kitchen appliance, connected to the internet. So this means you can do things like access online recipe sites. So you can browse recipes, you can share recipes, you can upload your own recipes. And you don't need to do it in the kitchen standing over the machine. It's all in the cloud. So grab your laptop or your tablet, pick your favorite chair, and browse away. Now let's say you can't find the recipe you're looking for, or you have a dish that you make at home and you know a 3D food printer can help you make it faster and easier. How do you tell the machine how to do that? Well, if any of you have seen 3D printer software, it's very complex, very intimidating. But at the end of the day, this is a kitchen appliance. 
we need it to be as simple to use as any other kitchen appliance. So the standard 3D software doesn't cut it for us. We had to make our own. We call it Fudini Creator. Fudini Creator allows you to take an empty dish and easily make your own creations. Dishes are pretty much made up of shapes and capsules. So shapes is the form you want your food to take, whether it's that square cracker or a cracker in the shape of a fish. You can grab that from our recipe site, or you can use any image you have locally or any image you see on the internet. It's very easy to do. Capsules is very important because we print such a wide range of foods, different food textures, different thicknesses. But we don't want you to have to manually program the machine with all those different variables to print. We automated a lot of it for you. So as an example, if Fudini knows it's printing a tomato sauce, it can print faster than it can, say, a thicker bread dough, which needs a slower speed to get a good quality print. So once you choose your recipe or develop your own, you simply print. So this is a demo of a uh, spinach quiche in the shape of dinosaurs. It was designed to help kids eat spinach. It works. This is sped up for purposes of presentation, but each individual printing of a dinosaur takes about a minute and 30 seconds. After it's done printing, we take it out of the food printer and we bake it in the oven. So our first 3D food printer does not cook. It heats the capsules, but doesn't cook. But we are working on versions that do cook. This is game changing. So imagine now that you have a machine that allows you to shape your food, and you have the option to have it come out of the printer fully cooked and ready to eat. That's just like your pre-made processed food. So we like to have people think about 3D food printers as being a mini food manufacturing plant in your kitchen, on your counter. Here's the big difference. You're using fresh, real, wholesome, healthy ingredients to do your prints. So you may have thought that 3D printed food was fake food, but after this talk, I hope you don't think that anymore. The real fake food is the processed, packaged, pre-made stuff that you're eating that's loaded with preservatives and additives and chemicals that we don't know what we're eating. That's the fake food. This is real food, 3D printed. So we believe in the future, you're going to start seeing 3D food printers as a common kitchen appliance. It won't be a surprise to see it. What does this mean for the food industry in the future? Well, if I can print such a wide variety of foods, customized to my taste, I can make it healthier using fresh ingredients, and I print what I want, suddenly I become much less dependent on those packaged, processed, pre-made goods to the point of where I'm buying a lot less. The food industry will notice. So, 3D food printing, we believe it can help you eat healthier. We hope now you start thinking that as well. We're Natural Machines. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>